time for a civic declaration of decent work and basic incomes for all. Here's what the contention is. While good jobs in the traditional economy appear to be scarce, there's no lack of work needed to create a truly sustainable society. It is time to reframe the notion of good jobs in terms of work that needs to be done to build and strengthen our social and civic infrastructure. We need to rebalance our economy for one tilted heavily towards private wealth creation and concentration to one of collective stewardship of our human and financial resources offering shared opportunity for all. And so the guaranteed annual income has been studied since the early, uh, uh, in the mid-80s here first, and first of all in the 1960s as a possible solution to, uh, to the issue. And I want to make sure that we, make, we are definitely on side and have to support the notion of adequate incomes for people so that they can have basic necessities of life. There's no question about that. One of the things I worry about is losing the connection with that other basic need, which is to contribute and to be able to be productive in our lives, which with whatever level of work we can do, recommendations to was it, what we call an integrated income model. New employment patterns which allow more involvement in educational, familial, and community activities would require some kind of integrated income model. That is, an individual's family's total income would be constituted from both market and public sources. What people could earn in the marketplace and what they should be given to supplement their incomes if their earnings are not adequate to allow them to have a decent life. What would it mean to move from private wealth creation to one of collective stewardship of our human financial resources? Because Aboriginal culture is based on the principle of stewardship, stewardship of land. What would, it, what would it mean? Because clearly the approach we're taking now, the dead money, the putting of all the resources into private initiative, okay, is not leading to anything other than the depletion. Charity is not a substitute for collective initiatives. Charity doesn't feed people. Charity does not buy decent housing. Charity doesn't give people a decent education. We have to have a mission, okay, of rebuilding our infrastructure. And that's what we have to do. And these are some of the themes that we've developed in our Poverty Free Ontario Bulletin. The notion that guarantees should not just be about income, but about your ability to make a contribution. And, for, and that means for most people, being able to use their skills and abilities and develop them to be able to work. For other people, maybe only to work part-time. And for those who cannot at all, they have an adequate guarantee that they have a decent life, life through public income, to an integrated income model. So we're talking about connecting work and uh, income, not a substituting income for work, but supplementing income with work for those people who can work. And, that, and I think we have to make sure that we reinforce the importance of both and make sure that the income side of things, you know, is integrated well with the employment side of things and never expecting, never forcing people to work for their income, but having an integrated blend and balance in a, in a, in a real, that's what will produce decent living. The last time we had this was in the early 70s. We had a large cohort of young people and we knew we didn't have enough work for them, the baby, the baby boom. And so we created community employment programs where we said to people, young people, first young people and then all people, give us your best sense of what important work has to be done in your communities. Tell us what it is and we'll fund you for, I forget the number of weeks. Initially it was 12 weeks, but we got it extended a number of times so that it turned out to be three years. Tell us what has to be done. And what was interesting about it is that people had so many ideas. Let me tell you, let me tell you a commentary about the moral fiber that we have. The economists with their incentive thing, unemployment insurance in 1974 paid $90 a week. 
Community employment was promising people $100 a week. You would have thought that who would volunteer for community employment when for $10 more you considered you're, you're behind. There wasn't a single community employment project that went looking for people because the desire to contribute was so strong that people came out. Now, we're at the same stage now where we have talented young people and talented people. And we have things to do in our community. And we have each year a million dollars worth of dead money each year. My memory is going, so you'll, you'll, you'll know what I'm saying. So I think we should be having a discussion that if we had the resources, what kind of work would we want to do in our communities? Maybe we should ask people what is the work they think that has to be done in our communities. That's what the contention is. Collective stewardship, where we take responsibility for sustaining the well-being of nature and of our communities. And that's the challenge we face. And we can meet that challenge. We can meet that challenge. Thank you very much. <laughs> I got my